Good morning. It is VBS Sunday. We're so glad everybody's here this morning. Uh, this is a very special service. We had an incredible week at VBS. We're going to start this morning uh, by doing our theme song. So you guys know the you guys know the hand motions, right? You know the song. This is Discovery on Adventure Island. We need to teach everybody in the room this song. We got it on the screens here, and we got our folks who are going to do the hand motions next to us here. It's going to be so much fun. Lots of energy. Let's stand up and sing. Come on. This one's called Bustin' Through the Roof. Let's sing together. Here we go.
parents who are joining us from home, we are so glad you are here for this vacation Bible School Celebration Sunday. If you've just walked in for the first time and you weren't aware this was Vacation Bible School Celebration Sunday, my sincere apologies. Um, you're here now. Um, so we have a few quick announcements. Everybody say number one. You have attendance pads that are at the ends of your pews. If you will please take those and sign those and let us know you are here. And this is not just for people who've been coming here their whole lives. Is this, if this is your first time to be with us, yes, we want to know that you are here. You're part of us now. First time, hundredth time. You're part of this family. So we want to know that you are here. And if you are interested in how to join or how to be involved in some of the other amazing ministries of this church, right after this service, across the courtyard in Wesley Hall. You just go up the ramp, and it's called On Ramp, and you can find out more information. There's even a gift for you. Uh, maybe it's a mug. Maybe it's a set of Ginsu steak knives. I don't know what Lisa's got cooked up, but go check that out. Everybody say number two. Number two. Right after this service in the garden, in the courtyard, for those of you who are in kindergarten through fifth grade, this is your first opportunity to register for Fall Academy. And anyone who is watching us virtually, you're, you'll get to. We open that up virtually tomorrow at noon. But those of you here, make sure you go register. Everybody go, oh. See how beautiful that was? So I want you all registering for choir as well. Okay, that was a trick. You fell for it. I win. Go sign up for choir. We need more singing. We need more singing. I, I, what I've noticed both in the gathering and in the traditional services, congregations are singing again because we remember what it was like when we couldn't. And listening to our children sing is just such an amazing gift. So make sure you sign up for that. Now, one of the things we discovered through Vacation Bible School this year, because we had smaller class sizes to stay safe, is that smaller class sizes are pretty okay, all right? The kids feel more seen heard and known, and the teachers feel more in command and less overwhelmed. So warning, there's a pitch coming. <laughs> so when Fall Academy happens, one of the best ways that we can keep our class size as small is if we have lots of volunteers to teach. And we need you, now look, I get it, all right? We have some, many of you have been your child's teacher for the last 16 months, and you're looking to get to go to grown-up land for a while. When you sign up to teach an academy, that doesn't mean you're signing up for every single Sunday. Every teaching team we have has three teachers so that on any given Sunday, one of those teachers can go to worship or adult Sunday school or their 10th high school reunion or maybe A&M had a home game that weekend and you don't want to have to shuffle in on Sunday morning. We try to work it around you. So please, please, please prayerfully consider which is church speak for say yes to volunteering to be a teacher. Say number three. Okay, in most worship services, it would be your gifts, your contributions, your financial commitments. I work with kids. We say money, okay? The church didn't fall down from saying money in worship. All of this happens because of God, Jesus' love, people, and yes, money. It costs $15 for a child. Well, here's the deal. It was $15 to register your child for VBS. That's 15 hours for the week. That's a dollar an hour. Do you think Vacation Bible School costs $1 an hour per child? No, right? So anything you're able to do, anything you're able to contribute, either through pledging or through the offering, however you can, we are so grateful because it's your gifts, it's your love, it's your spirit, your support, and yes, your that allows this to happen. So thank you. Those are the announcements. And now, hmm, maybe we're going to be joined by some friends. I wonder. Looking for boats. Looking for boats. You can't really see. I've got a telescope that got turned into a spirit stick <laughs> this week. So let me... Use my telescope real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for <laughs> boats? Well, that's not super helping. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Adventure Island. My name is Lighthouse Lance. I'm here to shine my light to help keep all the boats at sea safe and help them get back to harbor. But mainly, I've been trying to keep one tugboat captain foggy 
from getting lost. I'm lost! There's Foggy now. Help! I'm lost! Foggy, come to the lighthouse! Which one's the lighthouse? It's the big house with the light on it, Foggy. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. Hi, Lighthouse Lance. Hi, Foggy. So did you get lost again? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the other day, my Nana gave me some advice. She said, Foggy. When someone does something for you, make sure that you're never great with latitude. Actually, I've never been great with latitude, which might explain why I'm lost all the time. Great with latitude. Hmm. That doesn't sound right. I think it's time for us to consult the world's wisest mollusk. Kids, what's his name? Alexander Clamilton. Alexander Clamilton. Alexander Clamilton, Foggy is lost again. Do you have a word, a pearl of wisdom that can help him out this morning? Hmm. Okay, he says, arise and shine okay, with thank thankfulness. What do you think about that, Foggy? Hmm. Arise, shine with thankfulness. Thankfulness! Right! So, instead of me never being great with latitude, I should never be late with gratitude. <gasps> Thanks, Clamilton! Hey, I did it! And Lighthouse Lance, thanks to you. Hey, I did it again. Thanks, friends. You know, I think I'm getting pretty good at this. Bye, friends. Okay, so we have heard from Lighthouse Lance. We've heard from Foggy the Tugboat Captain. We have even heard from Alexander Clamilton. But this is Vacation Bible School. If only we had someone in our midst, perhaps someone even with a PhD, who could help us connect in meaningful ways God's great story to all this fun. Well, Mr. Mark, I'm here to help. Hey, friends, it's our own Bible superhero, Dr. Z. Let's all go zzzz. Well, I overheard that the pearl of wisdom today is arise, shine with thankfulness. Yes, and we need just the right Bible story to connect with thankfulness. Well, I got it. This Bible story comes from the Gospel of Luke in New Testament. Now, remember, gospel means good news. Let's say it together. Gospel, gospel means, means good, good news. news. And this story is full of good news, especially for 10 people that encounter Jesus. Ooh, and that gives me an idea. Dr. Z, why don't you stay here and tell us the story, and then friends, here's what we're going to do. This will be a story that we all tell together, and it's a call and response story. So Dr. Z will tell part of the story, and every once in a while she's going to pause, and then we have to say this. It goes like this. Mind and body, heart and soul. Let's do that part. Ready, go. Mind and body, heart. Jesus, love can make you whole. Jesus can make you whole. So mind and body, heart and soul, Jesus' love can make you whole. Let's do the whole thing. Here we go. Mind and body, heart and soul, Jesus' love can make you whole. Hit it, Dr. Z. Well, that'll work. So here's the story. One day, Jesus was walking to Jerusalem. On the way, he entered the village and was approached by 10 men who were not well at all. <gasps> Mind and body, heart and soul, Jesus' love can make you whole. Because of this disease, they were considered unclean. They had to warn everyone to stay away from them. 
The ten men begged Jesus for mercy. Let's do it with sad voices. Mind and body, heart and soul, Jesus' love can make you whole. Jesus told them, the ten men, to go show themselves to the priests. In those days, the priests were the ones who would determine if someone was clean enough to rejoin society. As the men went, they saw that they had been healed. They ran off excited. With excited voices, mind and body, heart and soul, Jesus' love can make you whole. But one man came back. He laid down at Jesus' feet and said, Thank you. Jesus asked, Weren't there ten of you? Only one of you came back. Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. With big voices and thankful hearts, mind and body, heart and soul, Jesus' love can make you whole. Thank you, Dr. Z. Let's send her off with a little more zzzz. Zzz. And now our friends Clint and Taylor and Lance W. are coming back up, and it's time for a group song to do together. And we have the perfect song, don't we? This little light of mine. Everybody stand up. Up, 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 up. This little light of mine. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if there are some other friends who are here to join us. Hmm, let's find out. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Adventure Island with your old pal, Splash the Dolphin. You know, Beacon is usually the one to greet you, but I wanted to get here a little early. He does so much for so many. Oh, here he comes. Hey, maybe you can help me. When I count to three, let's all shout, thank you, Beacon. Get ready. One, two, three. Thank, thank you, Beacon. Beacon. Ah, wow. That much gratitude is a little uh, surprising, but, but thank you for what? All I've done is show up. But Beacon, showing up is one of the most important things any of us can do. To be there for others is such a gift. Thank you, Splash. I'm trying to have more of an attitude of... A gratitude? I was going to say thankfulness, but sure, gratitude works too. If you really like rhyming. I do. So uh, what brought on this new Attitude of gratitude. Well, you know how I'm the new swim coach for that team of little animals just learning to swim? Yes. Oh, they're so cute. My first lesson was with three seal pups, a starfish, and a little bird who's a muffin just like you. Puffin. But go on. Right, a puffin. And I was teaching them how to dive into the water without belly flopping. They were a little nervous at first, and all five of the starfish's legs were shaking. But eventually they all did it. 
You should have seen the looks on their faces. They were so happy and proud of themselves. One of the seal pups swam up after the lesson to tell me thank you for being such a good swim coach. That made my little dolphin heart very happy. You are a good swim coach, an even better friend. Oh, Beacon, thanks. Anyway, after that, I swam home to make a car for you. Here, sorry it's so wet, but I do live in the ocean. Dear Beacon, you really do live into your name as a guiding light for others. I'm better because of you. You're kind and patient and the best friend a dolphin could ever have. Thank you for being you, Splash. Splash, this is the nicest card I've ever gotten. Thank you. There are so many good things happening in our world because of others like you making those good things happen. I'm going to try to remember to say thank you more often. Me too. And to all of our friends here on Adventure Island, we have loved getting to spend time with you this week. You are each a guiding light in this world, partly because of what you do, but especially because you're you. Others will be inspired by your light, and the world will be better for it. So before we go, Splash and I just want to say thank, thank you. you. So one of the things we do during Vacation Bible School Assembly is every day we have the spirit stick. And the different grades vie for who gets to have the spirit stick for the day from kindergarten all the way through our super sixers and even one day when our real friends who were joining us virtually, our virtual class got the spirit stick. But before we present the spirit stick, we always do the spirit prayer. So repeat after me. Holy Spirit, come to us. Holy Spirit, be with us. Holy Spirit, work in us. Help others see God's love in our eyes. Help others hear God's love in our laughter. Help others feel God's love in our hands. Our hands of love and friendship. Amen. Amen. So, you may have picked up on a theme today of gratitude, of saying thank you when someone does something, of taking the time to stop and say thank you, of being thankful, of people giving their money, of people giving their time, of people giving their spirit and their love. And so, I want to pause so that we can today present this spirit stick and say thank you, if I can grip the spirit stick, where is this thing in? This is a really confusing spirit stick, by the way. And say thank you and invite up our Vacation Bible School Chair, Lauren Sykes, come on up. Let's hear it for Lauren. Maybe I'll hold this while you talk. Is that okay? Do you want to use one of these microphones? All right. Uh. Wow, we had an amazing week. Um, welcome to Discovery on Adventure Island. This week, um, your kids learned Bible stories of the creation story, Moses and the burning bush, faith through the roof, the lost parables, and Mary at the tomb. Um, as today you heard our phrase was arise, shine with gratitude. We also learned shine with love, trust, faith, joy, and hope. Um, but I want to say a big thank you to all of the volunteers. There are so many of you here. Will you please stand if you volunteered this week at VBS? We could not have done it without you, and if you have never volunteered at VBS, I strongly recommend that you do it next year. It is so exciting to see all the joy on the kids' faces. I also want to thank all the staff that volunteered this week. I know that is not your traditional job, and you were very needed and very appreciated for being here. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Mark. His creativity brought all the fun and excitement into the week. 
I want to thank Mary Catree and Janice Cooper. I know Janice is over here. There's Mary too. They've been running around. They do all of the behind the scenes work that you don't see and it could not have been pulled off without them. And then I want to thank Cy Wagner. She cannot be here today, but she is the co-director this year and she is in charge next year. If you see her, just say yes. She is fantastic and brings a ton of energy. But thank you all so much. There you go. I don't know. And the best thank you of all is she gets to take this home with her. Aren't we nice? We are so generous. And don't trip walking down the steps. Yeah, you need an attendant for that thing. All right, I would like to invite all of our Super Sixers to come to their places now. So if you're a Super Sixer and you're here this morning, even if you, yep, yeah, just come on down and I'll arrange you. Some of you are kind of playing different things. So let me put you back where you were. So our Super Sixers do something that's kind of become a tradition is during the offertory, which we're about to have. By the way, I invite the ushers to come down. This is a short piece, and I want to, this looks like a very generous congregation today. So, uh, yeah, ushers, come on down and start passing those baskets. But I wanted to brag on the Super Sixers just a little bit because they are kind of like the seniors of children's ministry, and they are going across the street to confirmation and youth, and this is one of their last big hoorahs as part of children's. This whole week, they've been engaging in a lot of different kinds of mission projects, including bagging hundreds of bags of pet food for uh, dogs and cats that belong to people who don't have a house but, but really genuinely want companionship. The big thing they did, though, is this. We have something called the Kindness Project here at the church. Throughout the week, you may have heard about these cards, which are also on sale in the garden right now, and you probably have purchased 10 for your child so they can get autographs, and it's got all the different characters from Vacation Bible School for the week. But let me tell you about the money. Throughout the course of the week, your children raised over $5,000 that's, that in itself is worth the pause. And so with the Sixers, we're like, well, what do we want to do with that? Because the idea was we, at the end of the week, we're going to select some charities, and that money is going to go directly to those charities. And so we had a list of maybe a couple dozen charities, and it was a, we had really deep discussions about it. And so three charities that really resonated with our Super Sixers, and this is where they've decided for the money to go. One of them is called Saving Hope Animal Rescue, which uh, say, strives to rescue, rehabilitate, and find loving homes for abandoned, neglected, or abused domestic animals. That was one that really resonated with them. The Gladney Center for Adoption, so that the, these lovable children can, can be in homes with people who have so much love to give. And then the other charity was A Memory, Grow, uh, a Memory Grows, which provides a space of healing uh, and peace for parents who are grieving the death of a child. Those three charities really resonated with our Super Sixers, and each one of those charities is already receiving funds of over $1,800 a piece. <laughs> so the offering today goes to, to the church the $1 bills go to our First Street Methodist Mission, but if you would like to do more for any of those charities that I just mentioned that have been the uh, inspiration of our kindness project for the week, I am sure people in the garden where those cards are being sold would be happy to accept any donation you would like to give so that total can go up. Sixers, you ready to jam? I don't know. We'll find out. We'll see. Do we have enough instruments for everybody? We're we good? Okay. Here we go. This is Stomp in the Sanctuary 2021 edition.
I just flunk them and keep them another year? I mean, it, would it be that hard? You could go back and sit with your families. That was amazing. Wow. Everyone taking a deep breath. And now we're going to transition. And as we transition, we're going to sing a song that is one of my favorites to sing. And we're going to do it a cappella. All you have to do is echo me. Do not be afraid. God is with you. Everywhere you go. God is there. Do not be afraid. God is with you everywhere you go. God is there. Everyone. Welcome and good morning. My name is Lighthouse Lance, and I am one of the pastors here at First United Methodist Church of Fort Worth. I am so glad that you are here. Whether you're one of our VBS family, someone who's here every week, or whether you are a first-time visitor or guest, welcome. What a week you picked uh, to come join. I'm thankful that you're here. In just a second, we're going to read a portion of Scripture from Isaiah chapter 60, just verse 1, and this has been a uh, theme verse for, uh, throughout the entire week for us. If you're one of the folks who has your Bible with you and who takes notes and highlights, Isaiah chapter 60 is, uh, verse 1 is what we're going to be reading, and that's what Alexander Clamilton has been helping the kids really come and understand, and it's all about shining light. And the scripture says this, Arise and shine, your light has come, the Lord's glory has shone upon you. God speaks to us through the reading of scripture. Thanks be to God. Amen. One of the things I'm thinking about this week is what happens when we baptize babies. We are so fortunate in this congregation to be baptizing so many children almost every single week when we come together in worship. Another child has being baptized. And if you're a part of that regularly, you know the drill. You know what's going to happen. The family's going to come up. They're going to say vows. They're going to hand the child to me. Maybe the child will like that. Maybe the child won't. I will baptize the child. I will then pretend like I'm going to steal them because I'm so happy. And then I will walk around and I'll say to the entire congregation, this is not just a big day in the moment of this child. This is not just a big day in the moment of this family. This is a big day for the entire church. Because when we baptize children, we baptize them into the entire church. And we say in our vows, in our congregational response, that we're all going to be a part of raising this child together. We're all going to be a part of shining the light of God's love into the life of this child together. And I always say things like, and that means volunteering for vacation Bible school, and that means things like high school mission trip, and that means things like junior high lock-in, middle school lock-in, and mission trip, which is happening next week, spots still available. <laughs> it's a whole church thing. It's an all of us thing, and it's not just for people who have children in the ministry at that moment. It's for all of us, and I can't tell you how much it meant to me to be walking around the hallways throughout this week wearing my uh, I appreciate all the different things other than lighthouse attendant y'all came up with to describe my costume this week. But it was so powerful to see so many of you who were volunteering, taking time off work, memorizing scripts, memorizing lessons, coming up with crafts, and doing all of that, who didn't have children in the program. Those of you who are young adults, those of you who are retired adults, those of you who have a million other things you could be doing, and you took time out of your day, you took time out of your schedule, you blocked it off, you committed, you gave energy, and you showed up day after day after day to shine the light of God's love into the life of children. And I just want to take a minute, we've done a lot of clapping, we've done a lot of celebrating, but that is what ministry is. Would you please give all of those people a round of applause and appreciation? That's what church is. That's what church is. That's what church is, and that's what this church is. And when we were talking about worship planning and organizing and VBS Sunday and what it was going to look like, we had all these different elements and the question kind of became, okay, so how much of the service is going to be VBS, right? How much of the 930 gathering service is going to be VBS? And it didn't take just two or three seconds to think about it to realize it's going to be all of it. It's going to be all of it. All of the service is going to be VBS finale celebration for the families, for the kids, for the extended families, for the volunteers, 
all of it. And the reason why takes me back to when I was a kid. And when I was a kid, I uh, grew up in a house that had a wonderful den that we could spend time in. It had an awesome backyard that we could spend time in. I had a great room. We had a game room upstairs. We had all these places that were fun for a kid, that you could go, that you could play in, that were for you, except two rooms. There were two rooms in the house that we couldn't go in. Mom and Dad's room and the fancy room. <laughs> Did anybody else have the fancy room? Our house had the fancy room. Right when you walked in next to the door, there was a dining room that nobody dined in ever. <laughs> and it had fancy furniture with fancy cushions. And then we had fancy plates that descended from on high to Moses himself that were passed down generation through generation to my family somehow. And they were only ever used when special people came over or on Christmas or Thanksgiving. That's the only time fancy room was ever used. And the family would all get together and the fancy food would be made and the fancy plates would come out and we would all sit at fancy table unless you were a kid. <laughs> and kids sat at a card table. <laughs> we sat at a card table with paper plates because the fancy was not for us. Because the fancy table, the big table, the parents' table, the grown-up table was not for us. Now, no shade on my family or any other family that has that practice. I completely understand. I got a bunch of kids right now that I don't necessarily want next to the nice table with the, with the, with the, uh, the nice utensils. I totally get it, but I just need to let you know real quick, at First Church, at this church, at our church, there's no kids' table. There's no kids' table at our church. There's no kids' table at our church. The entire table is for our kids. The entire ministry is for our kids. The love of Christ, everything that we have is for our kids just as much as it is for everyone else. Kids, if you're here and you're a kid, say whoop! whoop. If one more time, if you're here and you're a kid, say whoop. whoop! Kids, I need you to know this. This is your room. This is your room. This is your room. This is your church, and it's for you, not just when you grow up. It's here for you right now. This is your place. You're loved here because God loves you, and God says, this is for you. If that's good news, kids, say amen. amen. And there's no better way for us to know that, whether we're kids or adults, is to come together and experience the table of the Lord. I want to invite our uh, communion stewards to come forward and assist with communion. Kids, you may not realize this. But one of the things that we do every single time we come together for church is have a snack because we get tired and the sermon is long and we all need a little sugar pick-me-up at the end of it. And we have a special meal, a special meal that Jesus gave to us. You've heard the story about how Jesus loved us so much that he experienced the cross and the resurrection to show us that he would always be with us. And he was having dinner with his friends, normal people, just like you or your mom or your dad or your grandma and your grandpa. And he knew that those normal people would be scared when he was gone. And he knew that they needed to understand that he was always with them, that they never needed to be afraid. Just like we sang, do not be afraid, he, needed, he knew that they would need to know that they wouldn't have to be afraid ever because of his presence and his love. So what he did during that dinner, was he took an ordinary piece of bread, and he gave thanks over it, and he broke it, and he passed it, and said, take all of you and eat. This is my body, which is a special sign of my love for you eat it in remembrance of me. And afterwards, he took a cup of ordinary table wine, gave thanks over it, blessed it, and passed it, and said, take all of you and drink. This is my promise of a new covenant, meaning a new relationship, and I do it for the forgiveness of sins for you and for many. So drink it often in remembrance of me. Kids, this is a special sign of how much Jesus loves you. In our church, it's for everybody. It's for grown-ups, it's for grandmas and grandpas, it's for kids, it's for strangers, it's for people who've been in church every single day of their life, it's for people who've never been in church before and they're just now learning about how much God loves them. In just a moment, we're going to go row by row, starting with the first row and then the row afterwards. No one's going to release you, you can just go when it's your time, and you're going to come with your parents, and you're going to come up here to the front, and there's going to be people who have special baskets. Those special baskets have already been pre-cut, and those people are going to take little bits of bread. They're going to take them with some tongs, and they're going to put them in your hands. And there's going to be some little cups. And in that little cup is a little bit of juice. And when you eat that bread, and then you drink that juice, that's a chance to taste and touch and see how much Jesus loves you. 
And I have, a, I have a surprise for you. If you've never done it before, kids, it's going to be delicious. It's going to be good. Because the love of God is good. Because how much Jesus loves you and there for you is good. Friends, whether we are six months, six years, 66 or 106, the love of Christ is with you today. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for all our children. Just being a part of the church means that these are our kids. Jesus, we give you thanks for, your ki- for our kids because they're your kids. They're surrounded by your love. They're surrounded by your grace. They're made whole in your love. Jesus, you promise that you love us and there's nothing we can do about it. Lord, help us to show these kids how much they're loved and help all of us to step into the world filled by your goodness and your grace. And it's together that we pray the words that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lead us not into t- and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I've been leading so many people in the Lord's Prayer so many times a day for months. I'm going to be like, I'm going to screw it up one day. (laughs) Hopefully it'll be a day when there's no one here. (laughs) The grace abounds even for goofy pastors at the end of a long week. Friends, we're going to receive communion by coming forward. It's for all of you today, every age, every background, whether you're a member of this church or not a member of this church, it doesn't matter. Of course, it's going to be slow today and it's going to be goofy. We got plenty of time. There's no rush. There's no rush. You are home. This place is yours. This is the table for everyone. Come, taste and see. The Lord is good. Break him down to a 
his knees. God, I've been broken more than a time or two. I'm not going back, never be the same. That's why. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. 
hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Sending all our hope. I'm going to let it shine. Sending all our hope. I'm going to let it shine. Sending all our hope. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it
week, what a Sunday, all of that in a service, and we're still getting out in time to beat the Baptist to brunch. I love it. <laughs> Just want to remind you that immediately following the service over in the garden, we have a sign-up table. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, the way that we do Sunday school for our children throughout the, the, the fall and spring semesters is something called academy, and it's not just age level, it's also interest. So we have all these amazing classes, and the way that you find the class that's going to have your kid excited to get up and come to church every single Sunday is to immediately go over and register for the class that interests them the most. Some classes do fill up, so I want to encourage you to take advantage of that today. It doesn't open up for everybody else until tomorrow, but because you were here, you get first uh, bite at the apple. So please make sure to go do that. If you're a first-time visitor of guests, any age, any background, please go over to the on-ramp in Wesley Hall. Get a cup of coffee. Say hello. We have a gift for you. We're so thankful that you joined us here today. Friends, would you please bow your heads and receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the light of God continue to shine in your life. And as you go from this place, may the light of hope be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace. Day one, you created the heavens and the earth, made the daylight, you called the dark night. Day two, separated the water from the sky, on the third day, you made the land dry, you said it was good.